Some of you might know that I'm still pretty new at game development. So to expand my knowledge and to prepare myself for an upcoming game jam I want to participate in, I decided to take a little break from my game balls and make a smaller scale game that I could finish in about a week. Or at least that's what I thought. For this mini project, I went for a sort of pinball game, where you break an infinite amount of cubes and try to get the highest score possible. This of course being inspired by a very similar older arcade game. I got quite a lot of stuff done on the very first day. I created the ball and gave it the ability to move on its own and to bounce off wall at the exact right angle. And now I have this hysterical ball trying to get out of his cage. The interesting thing about the movement of this ball is that its movement is not actually physics based, meaning it's not using the built-in physics of the game engine, but basically just uses a function that updates its movement every tick, which at 60 frames means it updates 60 times per second, making it look very smooth. But why am I telling you this? Well, it's going to be something that's gonna come back and bite me in the ass at the end of this video, so take note. This is also important to me because it's completely different from my game Balls, since every movement in Balls is entirely physics based. Anyways, after adding the ball, I also added a platform that moves using the inputs of your mouse. This platform will be used to obviously prevent the ball from escaping and knock the ball onto the cubes that will be in front. This in itself isn't that bad, but I want to give the player more influence over the game to make it less random. So I made it so that when the ball bounces off the platform, it takes into consideration the momentum of the platform. Now, the player has a way to influence where the ball actually goes. And finally, I created a simple block that will get destroyed when the ball hits it. And that's day one. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with my own progression in one simple day. But this would very soon change. On day two, I decided to make my game look and sound more interesting, because at the moment it looks very boring. So let's work on adding some visual pep and some sound to the game. Well, you know what that means. It's time to bring back the glowing shit. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. So after being told by my friends and family that I have a problem, I decided to tone it down. And I think it's looking pretty juicy now. I also made it so that the cubes change color if they are hit, and also give it this little bump animation. When it comes to the sound effects, I simply went to... What is... Well, apart from being a stroke-inducing name, it also is an online software that allows you to quickly create very simple sound effects for your games. And it's entirely free, so if you're making game, go check it out. Links in the description. I also added this platform that will serve as the player lives. Instead of having a new UI that tells you how many lives you have left, you have that platform that saves the ball from escaping, but each hit changes its color to indicate that you have lost a life, and after getting hit three times, the platform breaks, and on the next miss, the ball will move out and the game is lost. Now that my game has some sound effects and is looking better, time to work more on the cubes, and this is where the problems start. My first thought was I would just let them spawn randomly within the borders of the wall. But this looked pretty terrible and messy. Also, they spawn on top of each other, which is going to be a reoccurring problem. My solution to making them look less messy is to create a grid system so that all cubes could randomly spawn on top of that grid system, giving them a sort of order. How hard can it be to create a working grid system? Well, you guessed it, it's very hard. The rest of day 2 and day 3 were spent trying to make the grid system work, but no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't figure out how to make it work. And with only two more days left before the start of the game jam, I decided to scrap the grid system and go for something simpler. On day four, I woke up, drank my coffee and went to work. I decided that instead of making a grid system, I would create a spawner. I would then place the spawner in places where I wanted the cubes to be able to spawn. The spawners would basically just act as a position for the cubes to spawn. For this to work, I need to start working with something I had almost no experience with. Arrays. 
Arrays are basically lists of things. It can be a list of locations, objects, numbers, names, and a lot more things. And so I've put all the spawners in one list or array and would pull out five random spawners to place my cubes on top. Now this works pretty well, but I still have the problem that if a spawner gets randomly drawn twice, the cubes would still spawn on top of each other. And for the life of me, I just couldn't figure out how to make it work. And since I was a bit in a hurry because of the game jam and slightly getting desperate, I joined an Unreal Engine Discord server and asked for help. And they called my code smelly. What the f- Who calls each other's codes smelly? I- It doesn't- It doesn't even make sense. Code doesn't have a sm- You know what, Adriel? Your mom is smelly. Oh! Anyways, I didn't manage to solve my problem the way I wanted to solve it, but I had another solution. I personally think this solution is pretty scuffed. I don't really like it that much because I feel like it could affect performance in a very unnecessary way. But basically, every time a cube is spawned, it would check if it's colliding with anything. If it's not colliding with anything, then obviously it can spawn. But if it is colliding with anything, then the cube would just select another spawner. And, and this works pretty fine, so I kept it for now. On day 5, I basically just refined the game and added a song. But I also ran into a problem. You remember when I told you that my ball movement was based on the ticks per second? Well, this is where it comes to bite me in the ass. You're biting my butt! When I tested my game with different frames per second to see how people would experience it on lower PCs or even on mobile phones, I noticed that the ball was way slower than if the frames per second were higher. And this does make sense. If the ball updates his position only 30 times per second, he'll move at half the speed than if he updates his movement 60 times per second. And this is a problem, since the game is about keeping up with the ball and people that have a lower frames per second have it easier since the ball is slower. I didn't have time to work out a proper solution, so I simply capped the frames per second at 60 for now and pray for the best. I then stopped the development on this game since the game jam was about to start. There's a video on that game jam that is coming up next weekend, so better subscribe and press the bell icon to not miss it. Also, here's a little snippet of the game I made. Okay, so this part here is after the game jam, and I have to say, I'm exhausted. But I did want to implement one final thing before ending the video, and that is a score system. It's simple. Every time the cube is hit, you get 10 points. And every time the cube is destroyed, you get 20 points. And voila, we have a score system. The game is ready to be played on itch.io. Go play it and try to get the highest score possible to then flex on my Discord channel. Oh, and before I go, don't be an Adriel. Be a cool guy and like this video. And that is all. See you guys next time. Jess Fixer.